the fray. I say I'm living on the fringe. And I think now we're back. So, hi, Anne, you there? I am so sorry about that. Um, That's all right. Just filling yeah. in for you there. Yeah, yeah. So here we are. Uh, let's mm -hmm. see here. Great. Okay. Um, how about if we go ahead and um, go straight into Gary's performance? Um, Great. I love Re it. Rebecca's, Rebecca's video is available for viewing on the High Desert Fringe YouTube page and also on the High Desert Fringe Facebook page. So if anybody was in the middle of watching that, I apologize. Uh, we're going to go ahead and introduce Gary and bring him in. Um, Gary Powers is performing a show for us called Bittersweet Memories in Story and Song. And Gary is an actor who's based in Palm Springs. He's also a singer, songwriter, and comedian. Um, he's a graduate of Emerson College in Boston, and he studied with Millen Stitt of the Circle Repertory and was mentored by John Kander, who composed Cabaret. Um, this performance that he's doing, Bittersweet Memories, captures the often sad beauty of life with story and song. I'm going to go ahead and bring in Gary. Great. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah. An actor who's based in Palm Springs. He's also a singer, songwriter. Hi, Gary. Um, <laughs> he's a graduate of Emerson College yeah. in Boston. Thanks for bearing with us. Um, yeah. 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 Thanks for bearing with us. Uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, start your um, performance here. Bittersweet memories. I don't know where that is coming from. I apologize. Gary, is your um, other? Do you have another computer in the in your um, room? No, uh, I, I unfortunately <laughs> had you guys on another screen, the Fringe Festival. So I right. got rid of it. Okay, okay, okay. got rid of it. Great, so we're gonna go ahead and, and make you the spotlight presenter and welcome to High Desert Fringe. Thank you, I'm so grateful to be here. Yeah, thank, thank you. This show is called Bittersweet and these are original songs and monologues that I'm very grateful to be performing here today. Every Sunday alone in the same pew at church, no one hears what she says when she prays. She looks to the cross knowing answers won't come, wondering why she's alone one more day. Her fingers will cling to those worn rosary beads she holds fast as they slip through her hands. She wants to go back to the days long ago when she longed for a gold wedding band. A priest told her, try to get rid of things from the past and she's tried many times to be free. She wants to return to the days long ago when her dream was as close as could be. She goes round and round in circles. Every day she's racing, but where? She goes round and round, now she's upside down. She lived and she loved, now she's lost. One more glance at the cross as she runs for the bus, looking out, never out, that's her way. At home in her chair, lost again in her thoughts, bitter sweetness, she is every day. She crawls into bed, sleep will take her away to the place where she's happy and free. In the arms of her love, all her dreams will come true, but alone in that bed she will be. She goes round and round in circles, Something old, something borrowed, she's blue. Still circling around, will she ever slow down? She might die wondering why in that pew. She goes round and round in circles. Where she'll stop is anyone's guess. She'll never slow down till she's deep in the ground. Cause she lived and she loved, now she's lost. No, she'll never slow down till she's deep in the ground. Cause she lived and she loved, 
now she's lost. She goes round and round in circles. 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 Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Dewey Havanoff, and I was asked to come here today to share with you something which happened to me in the park. I wanted to sing you a little song, but unfortunately, the man who created this extravaganza today could not afford an accompanist. So I will try to tell you what happened that day in the park and I can't seem to get him out of my mind. Oh, I saw a poor person today. Quite obviously this unfortunate had lost his way. I said, be gone, you silly bum. You should go back to where you came from. <laughs> Oh, I had an encounter with a poor person today. <laughs> I went right up to this creature and I said, why have you come into this park? <laughs> well, he didn't answer me. No, he, he simply started to bark. He said, it might be my birthday today. If in fact it's the first of May, Oh, well, I became intrigued by a poor person today. <laughs> he said, by chance, do you have any cake? Asked the man. I said, of course not, which sent him rummaging through a nearby trash can. I said, my good man, please stop. If you'd like, I could take you to IHOP. <laughs> Could I be kind to a poor person today? Well, he ordered six or seven entrees, then started to cry. <laughs> no one's ever been kind to me, he said. Oh, could I get some pie? Bad luck had come his way, and for some reason it was up to me to make his day. Could I be important to a poor person today? We walked back together to the park. He had food for a week. <laughs> but in that short time together, well, I no longer saw him as a freak. He said, I hope to see you soon. And then he waved at me with an IHOP spoon. <gasps> Did I just make a friend of a poor person today? All evening I thought of that encounter in the park when a total stranger pulled me from the dark. I now know that there but for the grace of God go I, along with my newfound obsession for pie. <laughs> Did a poor person change my life today? Yes, a poor person changed my life today.
Oh, sugar, you ever think about the Berlin Wall? I mean, instead of them tearing it down, I, I think they should have just painted it another color. Now, I'm not talking nothing extravaganza like the 16th Chapel or nothing like that. I'm just talking about a coat of paint. <gasps> no, you know what? They should have painted it black. And then at night, it would have been, how you say, indivisible. <laughs> And you know what they say, once you go black, you're never going to do crack. We songwriters, but well, we think of these things. You know, for example, you ever think about that word paint? Mm -hmm. If you take away the T, you have pain. So I always say to my sponsees, if you're having a bad day, just have a little tea with it or some other non-alcoholic beverage. God, I'm starting to sound like a crazy person, aren't I? You know, my sponsor, Bernice W., uh, you know her, sugar. Well, Bernice says that by becoming aware of the past, by accepting it, we find ourselves. <laughs> I told Bernice, I'm afraid one day I'm going to find myself and I'm going to say thanks, but no thanks, sugar. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm a little distracted today. I don't know if you remember, but tomorrow is the day I'm supposed to see my son red for the first time and all 23 years, ever since that night with his daddy, ooh, I'll never forget it. I'd had enough. And so I packed my bags and I, I, I took seven shots of green chartreuse and I downed seven black beauties and I 69 myself out that door. Here I am trying to find myself and red finds me first. And you know, it's scary. It's like going to the Country Bear Jamboree, nudist calling in accidentally stumbling over Mr. Jerry Falwell in the buff. I told Bernice, I said, look, Bernice, I don't think it's such a good idea for me to be seeing my son red after all these years. I mean, that child must hate me. Ooh, but Bernice, ooh, she looked me straight in the eye and she said, Ivy V, stop being so damn shellfish. Sometimes in your recovery, the chickens come home to roast. You're gonna go see that son of yours because it ain't about him, it's about you and your side of the street. And if that son of yours wants to scream, you let him scream. If he wants to shout, you let him shout. If he wants to call your names, I'm sure you heard them all before. And I know Bernice is right. But you wanna hear the craziest thing? I'm dying to see him. I'm, I'm sorry, sugar. I don't mean to be getting so emotional with you, but you know, sometimes in my recovery, I feel like this wall around my heart is starting to crumble. And well, it's scary. It is. Okay. Sugar, what do you think? And yeah, 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 I know. I look like a bad drag version of Mr. Milton Burl Ives. <laughs> but I think I look pretty good for an old broad. So listen, you go on, get out there. And just remember that no matter what anybody says to you, you are in the program now. Uh, uh, no matter what they say, no matter what they do, you have the tools to nip it in the butt. So go on and get out of there. <laughs> go on back while I get out on stage and do my last set tonight. Go on, go on, get out of here.
Howdy! My name is Ivy Valentine, and I'd like to welcome you here to Bronco Billy's tonight, the only country western bar in all Bayonne, New Jersey, where well, we encourage you to cry along with our sad, sad songs. The only thing is, sugar, don't cry while we're uh, singing our sad, sad songs because they're already watered down. So me and the boys are going to try a new song for you out here tonight. And we sure do hope you like it. But, uh, well, we never sang this song before in front of anybody. And, well, uh, now I guess you know why <laughs> you didn't pay a cover to get in here tonight. <laughs> but we sure do hope you like it. And, uh, well, if for some reason you don't, uh, well, as the boys in the band say, just shut your clap. <laughs> Mama always read the evening paper, dinner in the kitchen almost ready. Tell me what to do to make her look my way. And that is what they call an absent father. When the weekend comes, he can't be bothered. Tell me what to do to make him want to stay. At an early age, you just can't fathom, even though they like you, they don't like you. Who's a child of blame? These people know she starts to blame herself. Keep a distance from the world around you. Build a wall so high they'll never hurt you. Searching for some things, someone to save you alone inside yourself. There's a wall around my heart. It needs a pain job. Protects me night and day inside I die. There's a wall around my heart. It serves a purpose. The world keeps changing, yes, and so am I. First one came along to show affection. I'm married in a month, I just did affection. Tell me how to do, then play this married role. Maybe have a kid and then another. What I really need is to be mother. Tell me what to do, the fortress takes its toll. Party and alone, I'm still forsaken. Try to find my way, the road not taken. Struggling all alone, I need to leave this less than merry-go-round. Talking to a shrink, but can she help me? Tell her what I think I know she won't see. The frightened little girl alone and trembling who longs, who wants to be found. This wall around my heart, it starts to crumble. Each day in the past, it starts to fall away. All alone, I try and I always stumbled to build myself a world that should lie. There's a wall around my heart, no more a pain child. Protected me so long, but now goodbye. There's a wall around my heart, don't serve no purpose. The world keeps changing, yes, and so am I. The world keeps changing, yes, and so am I.
as my parents drove the three of us to the orphanage. I'd never been more frightened in my entire life. I looked to my older brother and my younger sister in the back seat of the dented red station wagon. And I knew they were thinking the same thing. Are they really going through with this? I was 10 years old when it happened. And if anybody's to blame, it's my older brother, Jerry. You see, Jerry is obsessed with baseball. I mean, more than obsessed. And today my parents discovered that he's received a C on his American history final. And well, for families like us who can only have higher education with straight A's, it's, it's a fatal mistake. Now my parents have threatened us with the orphanage many, many times before and driven us by the building. And, but this is the first time they've actually gone through with it. You know, maybe because hitting us and scolding us is no longer working. And I didn't know that the children inside the orphanage were not there because of any fault of their own, no? And I didn't know that parents simply couldn't take their children to the orphanage if they misbehaved. But you see, nobody explained this to the children in the back seat who were terrified. As my father zooms down Route 61, I look over at my brother, Jerry, and he seems rather resigned to this punishment. He's got his 15 year old blonde hair all slicked back. I can't even see the cowlick today. He's balancing this really large suitcase on his lap. And he's got on his best Sunday clothes as if there's some question whether or not the nuns at St. Francis are actually gonna allow him inside. The entire drive down 61, nobody said a word. But now I hear my father put the turn signal on to exit the highway. And I know St. Francis is only a short distance away. My little sister occasionally lets out a whimper, which is immediately silenced by a glare from my mother. You see, my mother rules with her face. My father? with his fist. Soon I hear my father put the turn signal on and we begin up the dirt road leading to St. Francis. I've never understood why it had a dirt road. Why wasn't this road paved? I mean, do children in an orphanage not deserve a paved road? And then I see it. St. Francis Orphanage silhouetted against the early evening sky. The incandescent lights from within glow, making me wonder what sorrow, sorrow and horror is going on inside. My father pulls up in front of the orphanage. It's about, the entrance is about 25 feet away. He puts the car in park and looks in the rear view mirror and says to Jerry, Maybe next time you'll do better. Now get out. Jerry doesn't hesitate. No, he pulls the car door handle towards him and opens the door very quietly, pushes it slowly behind him as after he's been <laughs> struggling with the giant suitcase. And he stands outside the car and is looking inside at us. And then he looks up to the entrance of St. Francis. And then he turns around and looks at us again, but my father puts the car in drive and begins down the driveway. My sister and I are pushed up against the back windows of the dented red station wagon, seeing Jerry get smaller and smaller in the distance. When my father gets to the end of the driveway, Jerry slowly turns and begins walking towards the front entrance of St. Francis Orphanage. My father immediately slams on the brakes, puts the car in park, opens up the door and screams, get in the car! Jerry doesn't hesitate, no. He comes barreling down the dirt road with his giant suitcase. I think the thing is gonna overwhelm him. And soon he's sitting next to me into the car. You know, I don't look at Jerry for, I'm afraid that it might be construed that I'm siding with the enemy. My father, drives us back to Route 61 and eases the car into the highway. Nobody says a word. 
And then all of a sudden my father looks in the rear view mirror and he says, don't do it again. But Jerry immediately says, don't you do it again. My father pulls the car over to the side of Route 61 with a screech. He slams on the brakes, puts the car in park, turns around and says, what did you say? Jerry says, you heard me, don't do it again. My father screams, who do you think you're talking to? Jerry calmly says, I thought you were my father. But today you prove that you're not up to the task. And I'm gonna tell you something, Father, that if you ever do this again, if you ever hit us again, I will come to you in the middle of the night and I will take your life. Nobody says a word. My father turns around, grabs the steering wheel and looks out front. We sit there for what seems an eternity. Giant trucks are rolling past us on Route 61, shaking the car. Or maybe I'm simply shaking. And then my father puts the car in drive and takes us home. The orphanage is never mentioned again. <laughs> and my father and Jerry seem to have found this new respect for each other, or maybe it's fear. <laughs> and me? I never trust anybody again. Which makes me wonder why I'm telling you this story today. <sighs> maybe just to let somebody in the universe know that I think of that every single day. When I crawl into bed at night, I lay there in the dark and I see it. St. Francis Orphanage, silhouetted in the early evening sky. It's incandescent lights glowing from within. And I remember, I remember that's the day. I became an orphan. I gaze upon the twilight sky, a bird I see is flying high, all alone it does not cry and still I wonder why, what made it fly so high above with no one by its side, why does it seem to have no fear? Alone without a guide, could I be the only one who sees its labored flight? Does it have a broken heart concealed by fading light? And then it's gone, it's out of sight. To break my solemn spell, I wonder as I trace its path what stories could it tell when all is said when all is done we look upon the lives we led the battles that we won oh we were what went right or wrong could i change a single thing when all is said and done. I tried my best to do what's right most times. I did succeed. But when I fail, I couldn't let it go. I'm still longing to be free. 
I see again the ones I hurt, their faces flood my mind. If I had another chance, could I be more kind? After all these years I see, what little did you ask? Couldn't be a friend, indeed I failed upon the task. Like that bird up in the sky, my unexpected flight's begun. Tell me why I turned away forever on the run. When all is said, when all is done, we look upon the lives we led, the battles that we won. Who oh, we were, what went right or wrong. Could we change a single thing when all is said and done? I was that bird way high up in the sky, running from the heartache that only I had caused. And now my life will be a memory. Tell me, please, I'll be at peace when all is said and done. Oh, tell me, please, I'll be at peace when all is said and done. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Gary. <laughs> that was Thank awesome, you. Gary. What an Thank amazing you. You voice much. you have. Thank you so much. Wow. Thank you so much for being a part of High Desert Fringe this year. It was incredible. I was there last year in some of Roy Boucher's three plays or four plays. I don't remember how many it was. And mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I'm actually grateful the way it got done this year because uh, Last year, I couldn't get to see some of the performances because um, we were on stage. So <laughs> I think yeah. this is a terrific way to do it. So congratulations to all of you. This is a really, oh, really you. wonderful thing. Thank you. And thank I just got to say, I am in awe of your quick change skills. You changed your costumes <laughs> and your Zoom backgrounds like faster than anything I could imagine. <laughs> so well, I'm, just, off I'm, to you. I'm sorry, I put the phone on do not disturb and somehow or another it <laughs> rang anyway. So. And when I get her for Aww. calling me, she's gonna get a piece of my mind. <laughs> thank you. It's all. okay. It's it's live. It's live. But thank it's you live. so much, we're Gary. Live. See you again soon. All Thanks, right, thank everybody. Bye. 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 You say I'm living on the fray. I say I'm living on the fringe.